Hello, I'm Steve Matthews and this is the Mars Stamp YouTube channel. If you find these videos informative, interesting or entertaining, please consider liking and following. In this video, I'm looking at Section 7 of the Mental Health Act 1983, which is about guardianship. For a guardianship application to be made, a person has to be suffering from a mental disorder and it's necessary for the welfare of the person or to protect other people. A guardianship order gives the guardian three powers. To require the person to reside at a specific place, to require the person to attend for medical treatment, occupation, education or training, and to require access to be given to a doctor, an AMP or other specified person. The guardian may be the local social services authority or an individual, such as a relative. The application has to be made by an AMP with two medical recommendations. Unlike detention under sections 2, 3 or 4, a guardianship order does not have any effect until the local authority actually accepts the person into guardianship. This means that an AMP and two doctors can't just decide that someone needs to be under guardianship. In practice, there's an extended process whereby a panel set up by the local authority look at the circumstances of someone being considered for guardianship and an application will only go ahead if it's accepted that it's appropriate. There are a number of problems with guardianship. One is that it can be used to restrict someone's liberty, but it can't be used to deprive them of their liberty. So, for example, if someone on a guardianship order decided to leave the care home where they were living, they could not be physically prevented from leaving, but they could be returned once they've left. Another snag is that although guardians have powers to require people to attend for medical treatment, etc., they don't have any power to make them accept that treatment. In practice, guardianship tends mainly to be, to be used for people lacking capacity, either because of dementia or learning disability. The Code of Practice suggests that guardianship is most likely to be appropriate for someone who is likely to respond well to the authority and attention of a guardian and therefore will be more willing to comply with necessary treatment and care for their mental disorder. The clear implication of this is that the patient should, should essentially be in agreement with the proposed order. So, guardianship doesn't have the powers of compulsion of a community treatment order, although unlike a CTO, the person doesn't have to be detained under Section 3 before a guardianship order can be considered. However, guidance suggests that if the person lacks capacity and is objecting, then the powers under the Mental Capacity Act would have to be used to authorise a deprivation of liberty. And with a non-objecting, non-capacitous person, it might be better just to go down the Mental Capacity Act route rather than consider guardianship at all. I was practising under the Mental Health Act 1983 for a total of 37 years and I only once made an application for guardianship. That was in 1985, not long after the 1983 Act came into force. I won't go into detail here, but it didn't work out well. According to the most recent statistics for England, which go up to 2021, perhaps because of the factors I've mentioned, local authorities are not keen on guardianship either. These statistics go back as far as 2003. In the year 2003 to 4, there were 460 new cases of guardianship and 900 continuing cases. However, in the year 2020 to 2021, there were only 55 new cases 
and only 155 ongoing cases. This represents a nearly 90% fall in the rate of new cases and a 94% fall in ongoing cases. I fully expected that the draft mental health bill in 2022 would either end the use of guardianships completely or at least drastically revise the rules, but it makes no changes. I suspect that within a few years, guardianship will essentially cease to exist. If you have been, thank you for watching.